The 2022 MLB season is officially over. The offseason is going to get started here very shortly. Key decisions ahead for the Twins also matters. What we can expect from players currently on the roster. Let's look back at Byron Buxton's 2022 season. Again, shortened by injury with spurts of excellence, spurts of struggle. So much to break down on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins, your daily Minnesota Twins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Sunday, November 6th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every single day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And this is Nash Walker, three seasons, hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins, four seasons, writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com. The season is over. Officially, it was long, but at the same time, it felt like it it flew by. It felt like the playoffs flew by, and, and they're officially over. The Astros are the World Series champs. I was, I was pulling for the Phillies, I'll admit. I was pulling for the Phillies in this World Series, but I do think the best team won. Uh, Houston was was very good all year. I wanted to see Astros Dodgers in the World Series for more reasons than one. I think the Dodgers had a better chance to to last and like push it to seven or even win the World Series because those were the two best teams in baseball all year. But Phillies had a nice year. Astros had a great year. Astros are your World Series champions. Today, Byron Buxton, his 2022 season, the ups, the downs, and what to expect. Most importantly, what to expect in 2023. He's his, his extension is kicked in. He's got six years left, 15 million or so guaranteed every season for Byron Buxton over the next six years. And I think 2022 was a really interesting year in a lot of ways. It was one I didn't see coming. In some ways, I saw it coming. You know, you know the injuries are going to happen for him. It's it's going to happen, unfortunately. I mean, I hope it doesn't, but at this point, it's going to happen. So on the one hand, it was predictable. On the other, I thought his profile at the plate was unlike one we've seen from him and certainly didn't see from him in 2021. If you'll remember, in 254 plate appearances in 2021, Buxton hit 306 with an on-base percentage at 358. He slugged 647 for an OPS at 1,005. It was his best offensive season, albeit he's only had one season where he's played over 100 games, but it was his best offensive season, one of the best offensive seasons in baseball in 2021. It was in 61 games, though. So the Twins extended him, and wondering, I think, always, if Byron Buxton plays 150 games, is he going to have an OPS over 1,000? Is that a possibility for him? I think the question is still unanswered, because he wasn't healthy in 2022. He wasn't healthy. It's easy to look at this line and say, and this might be true partially. I think it's partially true, but I don't think it's fully true. To look at his line, he hit 224 this year. OBP was at 306. He slugged 526. OPS was 35% better than league average, but a lot of that was carried by the slugging percentage. It's easy to look at that line and say, well, this is who he is. This is Byron Buxton. It's a t- he's a t- ton of swing and miss. He's home runner bust. He doesn't walk. This is who he is. I think that's true partially. But what I will say, in three seasons, I know parts of three seasons, but 187 games from 2019 to 2021, Byron Buxton hit 277 with an on-base percentage at 321. He slugged 576. OPS plus was at 137. So about the same OPS range as he had in 2022, but a different shape. The shape in those three years was higher average, higher OBP. He's not going to walk. Like that's not who he is. And he's going to strike out a lot. He's a, he's a slugger. He's a grip and rip slugger. That was extreme though. I think his line was so extreme in 2022 and he was Homer or bust. I'm not saying he wasn't Homer or bust. He was, but he was so extreme because of his knee. He dealt with the knee all year. It hampered him at different times. We had no idea because Byron's sick of the injuries. Like he's sick of talking about it. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. I don't know if fans are sick of it. He's most sick of it. He's most sick of the injuries, having to speak to them, having to address them every day, having to rehab constantly, having to go in multiple hours before guys show up to get treatment on his knee so he could play in the game that night. 
he's more sick of it than everybody combined. I can assure you. That's why I I don't think we can take what he did and say, well, this is the player he is. You know, 116 strikeouts and 382 plate appearances, only 34 walks, struggled with runners in scoring position. It was home runner bust. He didn't really wreak any havoc on the bases. He was six for six in steals. He DH'd a ton. It was an extreme year for him in many ways. With the knee, it was a different year. Usually he misses a ton of time with the injuries, but he played through it this year. And I'm not saying in recent years he should have played through it. Like he battled hard through knee and hip issues and more. Hand, got hit on the hand. He was battling through three things minimum at once at at points this year. So I think that's why it was so extreme. And what I'm going to take is the larger sample, which is four years of data and over a thousand plate appearances that say, He's a 258 hitter with a 316 on base percentage, slugging percentage at 558, OPS at 874. That's over his last 1,066 plate appearances. I'm going to take that sample. It's a larger sample, and I always prefer that, but I think that's more representative of who he is. A much higher average than he had. You know, that's 34 points better in average. I'm saying when he's healthy. 34 points better in batting average. He's a 258 hitter over the last four seasons. Better on base percentage, not much better, but better than 2022 and a slugging percentage that's within the same range when you compare it to the rest of the league. 874 OPS, his OPS in 2022 was 833. So similar realm, but it's a different shape. I think that's who he is, is over the last four seasons. As he's adjusted his swing, he's hit for more power. I'm going to take the last 1,066 plate appearances and, and say, I think that's the Byron Buxton we know. What makes a great athlete and why am I always going to be such a bobo on Byron Buxton? Why am I expecting, hoping for health again in 2023 when so many times it hasn't happened? After this word from BetOnline. BetOnline is your number one source. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new college basketball season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game and as always bet online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events including major league baseball mma boxing and golf head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more bet online is where the game starts it's not just football hockey's back college basketball starting monday I love college hoops. You can go play college hoops, NBA, NFL, whatever you want to play. Vikes are seven and one. Go play the Vikes. BetOnline.net. It's your number one source for betting football and anything for the start of the basketball season, hockey, whatever you're looking for. BetOnline.net. It's where the game starts. Byron Buxton is the epitome of an exceptional athlete. When I think athlete, the two things that make an exceptional athlete is elite speed and elite strength. Size and speed, size, speed, strength in baseball. It's size is a little bit less of an important factor in football, like Derrick Henry size and speed, but in baseball, it matters less the size because you're not hitting anybody size and power. No, I'm sorry, speed and power. And that's Byron Buxton. He's so fast and he's so powerful. And that's why he was the number one prospect in baseball, mostly because of his tools The power development has been shocking, I think, for a lot of people, and Twins fans included, but it shouldn't be because he is an incredible athlete, and I think it's why he gets hurt a lot. I do. I think he gets hurt a lot because, A, he plays super hard, and B, his body is is incredible athletically, and I think that's, that's why he gets hurt. I think that's the reason he gets hurt. He moves so fast. He plays so hard, and then when you get hurt, you're more likely to get hurt. And that sucks. That's the reality of the situation. And I, I'm i never going to expect him to be healthy for a full season. I thought last year was his best opportunity. And then we find out he was hurt all year with the knee. He's never. I'm never going to expect him to be healthy for a full season. But I look at 2017, I'm like, can we do that again? He played 140 games, 511 plate appearances in 2017. To highlight the impact, Byron Buxton, in 2022, if you remember, barely played center field. Like, he really didn't play that much center field at all in 2022. Yet, his numbers out there 
were unbelievably good. I mean, he saved eight runs defensively in only 445 in a third innings. Eight runs defensively. Outs above average, he was plus eight in outs above average. That was fourth among center fielders. Tied for fourth, you know, tied with Seti Mullins, Christian Pache, Dalton Varsho. A lot of those guys played full seasons in center field, and he didn't. And he saved eight runs out there in 445 innings. In the last two years, Buxton, in in less than 1,000 innings in center field, has saved 18 runs. It runs, saved 18 runs in center field. He's the best center fielder in the world. He is. He just is. But he's not out there enough. And that was a problem in 2022. And that's why I think there was more of a, of a microscope on him. Because what's happened with the perception to Byron Buxton is because he was so good when he played in 2021 and because there is so much of this outside hype, I think it's more outside the Twins fan base than anything else, that this is, you know, he's one of the best players in baseball. And I've said it too. You know, I've said Byron Buxton, I think unquestionably has the top, maybe top two or three of the best tool sets in baseball. Just the speed and the athleticism, he's absolutely top three. But because that's the case, I think there's been this expectation from him to be an elite hitter as well as an elite center fielder. And what I'm seeing since 2019 is the power is ridiculous and his defense is ridiculous, but there are clear holes in his game. There are holes in his game. He's going to swing and miss a lot. He's going to strike out a lot. He's not going to walk very much. He's a free swinger, but he's going to hit when he's healthy, 30 home runs a year. You know, he hit 28 in 92 games in 2022. He's going to, over the last four years, have a batting average in the 250, 260 range when you combine it all together over a, over a thousand plate appearances. And most importantly, most importantly, he's going to play an elite center field. That's why I've said, that's why people outside, mostly outside of the Twins fan base, but in the fan base too, have thought Byron Buxton's one of the best players in baseball. It's it revolves around his defense because I I'm I'm a believer that he's the best defender in the world at any position. I think he's the best center fielder in the world, and I think he's the best defender at any position on the field in Major League Baseball. We just haven't gotten a, a big enough sample of it. But he won a Platinum Glove in 2017. The numbers are crazy for how few innings he plays out there. I think he's the best defender in baseball. Full stop. If that's the case. You might say at that point, anything you get offensively is gravy. If he plays 140 games in center field, do you really, like Miles Straw just had a, I think he had a three or four win season because he was so good in center, didn't hit at all. We know Byron's going to hit a little bit and in his good years, he's going to hit a lot of it. He's going to be one of the best sluggers in baseball and he has been over the last four years. That's, That's the floor for me. Playing 140 games would be great and the value would be massive. Because Byron Buxton does it both, but mostly because he is an elite center fielder. He's the best center fielder in the game, and he can add in 30 home run power, and he can add in a 550 slugging percentage. And when you add those two things together, you're looking at a six, seven, eight win player. And that's why people believe he's an MVP candidate every single season. Because when he combines those two things, he's an all around exceptional, exceptional player. But I think it's adjusted for me, 65% of that 100% of of an exceptional all-around player is defensively. If he plays 140 games in center field, he's going to be a minimum four-win player. He was a four-win player this year in 92 games. If he plays 140 in center, he's going to be a minimum four-win player, even if he has a career low year at the plate. Like if he is, in 2017 is a great example. He put 140 games in center field and his floor 4.9 4.9 wins above replacement. He was a below league average hitter in 2017, 7% below league average. Since then, he has been 25% better than league average in terms of OPS. So that's your ba- your baseline. 2017, played 140 games, a lot of games in center field, and he was a five-win player as a below average hitter. That's where the hype comes from. That's where the excitement comes from because at one of the, the hardest positions in the field to play, to be the best at the hardest position to play, arguably, you know, short and center, short center catcher. I always say you can honestly interchange any of the three based on how you feel or the outfield that the the player is in. It's at one of the toughest positions to play and he is the best at it. That's a five win floor. It's a five win floor. If he plays 140 games and a majority of them are in center field, 
that's the excitement and that's the frustration is we just want him to stay healthy. Can he just stay healthy for 140 games? Nobody's asking for an Aaron Judge like season. I don't I don't know if that's possible anymore because I don't know what it looks like over 162 offensively. I just don't know what that looks like because we've gotten these mixed results, but defensively we know he's going to be the elite of the elite defensively. That's a five-win floor, and that's where his value comes from mostly. That's where his value has always come from mostly. But because he's had these huge offensive seasons short, you know, 2021 was short. He was awesome in 2020 in the shortened season because they were such short little stints that they were short. They were great. Because of that, there's this expectation, I think, from him to be an elite defender an elite hitter, an elite all-around player when he is on the field. But the, the fact of the matter is he's never fully healthy. He hasn't been fully healthy for longer than a month since 2017. That's the truth. He hasn't been fully healthy for more than, even you could go a couple weeks at a time since 2017. So how can you even evaluate a player like that? And that was the discussion last year when we were breaking down the extension talks because we thought maybe he'd get traded last year, or I did. How can you even evaluate who he is as a player when he's not healthy for weeks at a time as a hitter, I think. And I don't know what it looks like over a full season. I do know again, that he is an elite center fielder that he's, I think the best center fielder in the world defensively. I know that I know that he's a great center fielder. So to me, I also know that if he plays a 130, 140 games, there's a baseline there of a very, very valuable player. And then the exciting part was that he brought power too, that he brought power to the table, power and speed to the table as well. What can we expect from Byron Buxton in 2023? It's really hard. He's just such a hard player to evaluate because you see these short stints where he gives you the chills. And I always say he gives you, he does something on a field to give you a chance to win almost every time he plays. That didn't happen as much in 2022, I think because he was hurt and maybe because he played more games than he did, you know, the two seasons combined prior, and we just saw a, a regression to a more overall profile as a hitter, which is swing and miss and less on base. I think it was extreme. I think it was extreme. He's a lot better than a 224 hitter that he was in 2022, but I also think that the raw power, the slugging percentage since 22, since the COVID season, Byron Buxton is slugging 576. I think that's probably a little high, and I think the batting average is a little bit low. But over the last three years, he's hitting 257, you know, in 192 games. So I'm taking more out of that than I am out of 2022. I think if he plays, I would expect what he's done over the last four years combined, which is play an elite center field, hit 258, you know, to hit 260 on base, 315 to 320 range. He's going to slug 560. He's got 30 home run power. His OPS is going to be in the upper 800s. That's who he's been the last four years. I mean, that's our sample. So that's what I would expect if he's healthy, but I don't expect him to be healthy. So how do you expect anything from him in 2023? It's just impossible. It's impossible to put him into center field on your little depth chart for opening day. You put Byron Buxton in center field. Yeah, he's on your paper. It doesn't mean he's going to be in the field. That doesn't mean he's going to be in the lineup. So it's just impossible to think about what you can expect from him. But I think I said at the time of the extension, and I'll say throughout the upside and, and the floor, there's this perceived upside with Byron Buxton, which is he's an MVP level player. That's the, the perceived upside of him. There's also a floor with him that I've been talking about, which is the defense. There's a defensive floor. He's so good defensively. That if you can just, if you, if, 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 if you can just keep him healthy, he's going to provide monstrous value because of how good he is in, in center field. So there's a, there's a floor there that I think, you know, gets overlooked too, because when, even if he plays for 60, 70, 80 games and he's in center for a majority of them, he provides so much value out there that, you know, 15 million is a, is a drop in the bucket. But I, I also think that it's, there's sometimes too much of an emphasis on the 15 million and it being just such a bargain for the twins. I'm not sure that's, that's a hundred percent the case either. Like this is this team, this ownership group, and they haven't, they haven't shown that they're willing to go above and beyond with payroll, like $135, $140 million payroll. Yeah, Byron Buxton on the books for $15 million on the Mets, who have a $300 million payroll. He's like, he's like bonus. He's a bonus. 
But for the Twins, like it matters more. It's not nothing. You know, 15 million guaranteed is not nothing for the next six years. It's still important that he plays. But the most important part of that is that they they rely on him in the middle of their lineup and they rely on him to play center field. So what it does is requires you to have a very good backup option. It requires you to fill the lineup with more bats because you just don't know what you're going to get from Byron. If you knew what you were going to get from Byron, it would be a different discussion. And you you wouldn't have to maybe go after more offense this offseason. You wouldn't have to have a great backup plan for him when he gets hurt. But you can't rely on him to stay healthy. And he just wants to stay healthy more than anybody else. And when he is healthy, we know the value he can provide. There was a lot of swing and miss. There were a lot of strikeouts. The runners in scoring position numbers were not good. But what I would say is he was really hurt. His knee was hurt. His hip was hurt. And I know that doesn't make it any better. I know it's fr- even more frustrating. But what I'm going to take is his last 1,000 plate appearances, which is he's a 260 hitter with an OPS at 874. You know, that's that's what I'm going to take is the larger sample of who he's been since he remodeled his offensive game and his swing and hitting for more power and driving the baseball and swinging more freely. That's who he's been for over 1,000 plate appearances over the last four years. Not a 224 hitter a 260 hitter. So that's what I'm going to expect from him if he's healthy in 2023. And I think that's what we'll get if he's healthy in 2023. Always a disclaimer, if he's healthy. Byron Buxton, it was an interesting year. He was an all-star. He hit 28 home runs. He was outstanding in April. He had some months where he legitimately carried the Twins to a 6-1 and week, to a you know 5-0 and week, where he won weeks for the Twins because he was so good offensively, defensively, what he did on both sides of the ball. And then also, he was kind of a platoon guy this year. Against lefties, he hit 252 with an OPS at 917. Against righties, he hit 211 with an OPS at 796. So he's almost like, he's a lefty killer. We know that, but he didn't hit righties all that well in 2022. OBP below 300 against righties at 325 versus lefties. So it's it's a stark split. He was also great at target field. 865 OPS at target field, 796 OPS away from target field. Interesting year for Buxton. Second half, he only played 19 games, hit 254, and that's what his average over the last four years. That's what I expect in 2023. An outstanding March and April, or I guess April because of the lockout. He had a, an OPS over 1,000. June, he was great, OPS over 1,000. Really poor May, downish July, and then August, his season, his season ended with the knee, uh, the knee injury and eventual knee surgery. But they expect him to be full go for spring training. I expect him to be full go for spring training. It's just uh, how long does that last? In Twins wins, when Byron Buxton played, he hit 271 with a 987 OPS. In Twins losses, he hit 165 with a 641 OPS. He is integral to this team's success, which is tough because he's often not on the field. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. For your second listen, check out Lockdown Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Lockdown can provide. Lockdown Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts on, the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Free agency is going to get going in five days. We'll have a tender preview this week because that is next Friday. So we'll have that for you as we continue on with questions, big time questions for the twins this off season. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Go twins.